It's Not Easy to Be a Man After Traveling to the Future. Written by Madame Rue. Translated by Rio NG. Edited by MJN0898. Hosted on webnovel.com. And narrated by One Yoriko. Chapter 1. Souls Actually Exist After Death? Lin Lan was dead. The moment she found herself hovering in the air looking down on the scene below her, she knew that she was dead. She found she could see through solid walls. She saw her parents crying outside the intensive care unit and the solemn expression on her younger brother's face. She also watched as he released a quiet sigh when no one was looking, as if a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Lin Lan was not angered by this. She knew very well that she had been a burden upon her family for a whole 24 years, almost ruining their household, which was not very wealthy to begin with. If it were not for the fact that her disease was so bizarre that it was considered worthy of research, resulting in government support for her medication, she might have already passed away a full 10 years earlier due to inability to afford treatment. However, despite the delay, she still could not escape death in the end. The only surprise to her was that humans really did have souls. She peered up into the distant darkness of the night sky and wondered fantastically, perhaps there were beings such as Ox Head and Horus Face out in the world, or perhaps a Shinigami like in the anime Bleach, who would suddenly spring out and drag her into the afterworld. Abruptly she laughed, mocking herself for reading all kinds of useless books and comics while she had been bedridden. Shinigami from Japan? Why would they show up in China? Ox Head and Horus Face were much more likely to appear, and perhaps even a small ghost dressed in traditional clothing. Idiot. There's no such thing as human souls. This is your spiritual self. If you don't come back soon, you really will disperse into the air and become part of this world's energy. A childish voice rang out beside Lin Lan's ear, its tone frantic and concerned. Before Lin Lan could respond, she felt herself drawn back by an overwhelming pull, and her consciousness started to fade. Right before she blacked out, she seemed to hear the same childish voice cry out joyfully, I made it! I almost thought my host would be lost for sure! At that very moment, the national first-rate military hospital Lin Lan was in was plunged into darkness. Soon after, the entire capital, along with several neighboring provinces and cities, also joined in the dark. The impossible occurrence of such a wide-scale simultaneous blackout affecting the capital and several other province cities immediately prompted a commotion in the otherwise quiet night. Fortunately, the blackout did not last long, only lasting for three minutes. All the cities quickly returned to normal, leaving only the National Power Company in disarray. Within those three minutes, the electricity they had supplied to those involved cities had mysteriously disappeared, as if the power company had not provided any electricity to begin with. But in reality, as proven by their numerical data, they had released more than a trillion kilowatts in those three minutes, a greater amount than they ever had before. This matter was quickly handed over to the National Security Agency to investigate. After several months, the answer given to the public was that the computer systems used by the power company to track the electrical supply had been broken into by hackers, who had then tampered with the data and stopped the power supply, resulting in a mass blackout. And just like that, the public outcry over the blackout drew to a close. However, the investigation results were finally sealed into the nation's top security files were as follows. Unexplainable phenomenon. The power disappeared into thin air just as if it were an act of God. Star Calendar Year 4,731. At the spaceport of Planet Anta, all the warriors headed for the front lines were lined up to enter the regular battleships. Meanwhile, in front of the commanding mothership of the top-ranked official, a pair of lovers faced each other among the crowds of people saying goodbye, speaking in soft tones with their hands clasped. Lin Xiao, you must come back alive, pleaded Lan Lufan with teary eyes. Lin Xiao nodded. He had not expected that he would have to rush into battle after being married for only two months. But the enemy was relentless, and their nation wasn't faring very well, leaving him no choice but to take action. I leave the household in your hands. Lin Xiao felt sorry for his newly wedded wife due to his imminent departure. Once he left, all the messy bothersome issues in the family would fall upon this delicate woman before him. Could she hold off those greedy people? In his heart, he wasn't all that certain. With red-rimmed eyes but a firm voice, Lan Lufan said, Don't worry, Lin Xiao. I will take good care of our household. She placed Lin Xiao's hand on her abdomen and said shyly, In another eight months or so, you're going to be a father. We have a child? That's great! Blindsided by the happy news, Lin Xiao embraced his new wife and twirled her around in circles, joyous laughter spilling from his mouth. Lan Lufeng held on to Lin Xiao anxiously, but did nothing to stop his celebratory actions. After a long while, Lin Xiao finally put Lan Lufeng down and hugged her close, saying, Lufeng, thank you. What are you saying? I am your wife, and this is also a child I anticipate. 
Lan Lufang smiled gently with her hand pressed against her abdomen, the joy in her heart overflowing. I wanted to ask, what shall we name the child? At her words, Lin Xiao started to consider it seriously. Looking at the mere joy in his wife's face, a spark of inspiration flared. I have decided, whether a boy or a girl, our child shall be called Lin Lan. The child is both yours and mine, and is worthy of both our surnames. Lan Lufang was also an only child, so perhaps this name would give his wife some happiness. Sure enough, Lan Lufang was overjoyed, nodding vigorously. Yes, let's do as you say. The tears in her eyes could no longer be held back, and Lin Xiao could do nothing but frantically help her wipe them away. At this time, the platform announced the call for the final boarding. Lan Lufang hurriedly composed herself, wiped away the rest of her tears, and said with a smile, Lin Xiao, you must fulfill your promise to me. Lin Lan and I will wait for your return together. Lin Xiao nodded gravely. I always fulfill my promises. With anticipation for his child in his heart, Lin Xiao left, boarding the commanding mothership under Lan Lufang's teary gaze. Very quickly, the commanding mothership closed its doors and started up, and under the guidance of air control, it disengaged from the navigation frame of the port, slowly rose into the air, and pulled away from the Star of Anta, leading innumerable battleships into deep space. Meanwhile, unnoticed by the people focused on the departure of the airships, a massive amount of energy was generated by the simultaneous powering up of the countless airships, causing this patch of space to waver and even fold in on itself in some places. An almost microscopic particle suddenly appeared out of thin air and rushed towards the Star of Anta at the speed of light. Still mired in sadness, Lan Lufang suddenly felt her abdomen grow hot and cold and couldn't help but scream out in shock, her hands drifting instinctively to cover her belly. This drew the concern of the Chamberlain Lin Chen, who until now had been quietly standing watch like wallpaper in the background. Young mistress, are you all right? Lan Lufang closed her eyes and carefully took stock of herself. Finding nothing wrong, she finally relaxed and replied, Uncle Xin, I'm fine. I think I was just a little too emotional. After that, Lin Shen breathed a sigh of relief. Young mistress, since the young master's already left Anta, I think we should go back home now. It's too chaotic here. I'm afraid it may be harmful to your health. Lan Lufan was not a stubborn person, and she felt that Lin Shen's concerns had merit, so she nodded and said, Lead the way, Uncle Xin. In short order, the two of them were seated in a hover cart, speeding away from the spaceport towards home.